Hello, 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 and welcome to another lesson. This time we're going to look at plugins. In case you don't already know, a plugin is an additional feature that can be downloaded and added to Sibelius. The program already comes with a relatively large set of plugins that we can see in various plugin lists in some of the different menu ribbons. However, there are many more plugins that we can download online. So I'm first going to show you how to download and install a plugin, and then show you a couple of really great plugins that I can definitely recommend downloading. Ever since Sibelius 7, downloading plugins has been possible from within the program itself. In fact, it's almost ridiculous how easy it's become to install them. We click on File, click on Plugins, and then Install Plugins. We then arrive at a window that shows us all of the correct available plugins, and as you can see, there are a lot, and the number is still growing. When you click on one, you'll see a description of the plugin as well as its author, and down the bottom, the location that it will be available in. And once you've selected a plugin, you simply hit install. And we're done. And so, if I now go back to my score and look for my new plugin that was just saved under Other, there it is. As I said, installing plugins has become very, very easy. If you're still using an older version of Sibelius, plugins can be downloaded manually at www.sibelius.com slash download slash plugins slash index.html. Alternatively, you should be able to just type in Sibelius plugins into your search engine. It should be the first search result. So I'm now going to show you a handful of useful and interesting plugins. The first of these plugins should be useful to you regardless of what you do. It's a plugin called Exchange Staff Content, and it can be found in the other category of this huge list of plugins. As the name suggests, this plugin will swap the content of two staffs. We simply select the content we want to swap, then find and run our plugin. And there we have it. The content has been swapped around. Now, I've needed this many times over, so I've even created a shortcut for this plugin so that I can just use it at the drop of a hat if needed. The next plugin I'd like to show you is called Edit Part Instrument Names, and it can be found in the Text category. This is a nifty little plugin that allows us to change all of our instrument names. It is, of course, possible to change the instrument names without this plugin, but it's simply more convenient being able to change them all in the one window. In addition to the convenience of this plugin, we also have control over the instrument names as they appear in the score and as they appear in the parts. And this is something that appeals to me personally because I often like to capitalize the instrument names in my parts. I just like the way they look when capitalized. This plugin allows me to capitalize all of my part names in a relatively painless procedure. The next plugin on my short list is called String Harmonics and can be found under Notes and Rests. As the name implies, this plugin helps to automate the notation of string harmonics. As you are probably well aware, Notating string harmonics can be a little bit tedious because we require two different note head types. This plugin allows us to choose what type of harmonics we would like, and even tells us what resultant pitch will be produced, and will then add the harmonic notation to the notes in a selected passage. In addition to this, the plugin also allows us to play back the harmonics. The next plugin I'm going to show you is called Resize Symbols, 
and can be found in engravers tools. Because I personally work a lot with symbols, I'm a really big fan of this plugin. Normally, when we go to enter a symbol into the score, we can choose what size we would like the symbol to be. Normal, Q size, grace note size, or Q grace note size. But once we've made our selection and added it to the score, well that's it. We can't make any changes to the size of the symbol. And for someone who works a lot with contemporary music or customized symbols, this can be a little bit frustrating because there are often things that you would like to tweak. But the Resize Symbols plugin allows us to resize any of the symbols in a selected area. It's quite a powerful little tool. And I know that many people probably won't find it as useful as I do, but this plugin really gets me excited. The last plugin that I would like to introduce you to is the Hide Staffs and Music plugin and can be found in the Layout section. This is an example of a powerful plugin for a very particular kind of job. In the world of contemporary music notation, there is a very specific type of score called a cutaway score. A cutaway score only displays bars that contain musical content. That is to say that any empty bars in the score are invisible. No bar rests, bar lines, or even staff lines are displayed. And cutaway scores started appearing in the 50s and have been used in contemporary music ever since. This particular plugin is perfect for this sort of work. When we select a passage and click our plugin, the plugin renders everything, even the staff lines in that selected area, completely invisible, leaving only white space. So, if we wish to create a cutaway score, with the aid of a plugin like this one, we can white out all of our empty bars. So, this is an example of how there are particular plugins to suit very particular notational needs. And so, I would encourage you to at some point have a browse through the list of available plugins to see if you find anything that might be useful to your notational needs. Often, you will stumble across something that you realize might come in handy at some point. And of course, the best part is that they're simple to install and they're free. So I hope you have fun checking out some of these plugins and I'll see you in the next lesson.